Episode 179 with Sean Hostetter from Catadyne. I believe achieving success in the outdoor biz is dependent upon embracing the outdoor lifestyle and learning from outdoor leaders that came before you. If you agree, then listen up for tips, advice, and hacks about growing or starting your career in the outdoor biz. My name is Rick Says. Welcome to the Outdoor Biz Podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Audible. If you use Audible, then you know. If you're not, you're missing out. It's like having a library in your phone, and I use it a lot. Audible helps the miles fly by on the road or in the air as I'm enjoying great books I discover or are recommended to me by friends. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash theoutdoorbizpodcast. There are over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Start your 30-day free trial with Audible today. audibletrial.com slash theoutdoorbizpodcast. In this episode, Sean Hostetter from Catadyne tells us about the great work they're doing around the world, some unique partnerships, and a lot more. But first, if you want to grow your outdoor adventure business with a podcast, I've created a proven 10-step guide that will show you how to increase sales, educate customers, boost authority, and publish a podcast. From choosing your podcast style and content ideas to publishing your episodes, it has everything you need to know about growing your business with a podcast. Head over to outdoorbizpodcastacademy.com slash grow and download this free resource today. That's outdoorbizpodcastacademy.com slash grow. Hey, Sean, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Rick. Appreciate it. Yeah, good to catch up. We haven't talked in quite a few years. I keep running by the booth at OR, but you guys have been busy. Yeah, well, we, we didn't show at the last summer show. It's the first show in you know 20 years, but wow. uh, yeah, we've always been busy. And uh, yeah, you and I met, uh, I think, when you were back at the Eagle Creek days. I think that was it. Yep, that was quite a while ago. Yep, Chris Beak and I, um, I think he connected us. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yep. He's a good friend of mine. He and I went to college together. We, our wives have the same birthday. Our <laughs> wives have the same. We we're both married on the same day. We have a few things in common. Both went to BYU. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, I got my under, my grad degree from BYU. Yeah, great program. Yeah, good school. Yeah, good great school. school. It's funny. I was there. I was driving up to OR the last time it was in Salt Lake, and I hadn't driven in a while. And I went through Provo, and I thought, you know, I'm gonna go swing by BYU and see what's going on. Man, I did not recognize the place. It yeah, has it's huge. Grown. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. didn't even know where the the bookstore was anymore. I had to ask directions. <laughs> yeah, it was a small school when we were there. <laughs> yeah, really tiny. Yeah, crazy. So, how'd you get exposed to the outdoors? What was your first outdoor experiences? So, actually, when I was, you know, I grew up in Colorado and spent a lot of time in the woods growing up, biking and skiing and hiking, and uh, you know, just really spending a lot of time. I loved loved being outdoors ever since I was a kid. My dad was a cowboy. Family's all cowboys. And oh, they, wow. You know, they, they had ranches, cattle ranches, so I grew up like that. But uh, but uh, really, it, when I was going to BYU, I actually I actually applied to an outdoor store when I first got to BYU called mm-hmm. Out and Back. Mm-hmm. And uh, Chris Speak and I worked there together at Out and Back, and we were <laughs> selling, you know, water filters, and we were selling a lot of other things. But we were the number one uh, store in the nation selling uh, water filters and water purifiers. Wow. So you've been a water guy since way back then. Yeah, so funny, Chris and I both worked there, and then he, uh, when he graduated from BYU, he went to work for Pure <laughs> and uh, here in Minneapolis, and I went to work for, you know, I, w- I managed some ski shops in Utah, and then I went to work for a big, huge company for a number of years, and then I came back into the outdoor business to take Chris Speak's job here in Minneapolis oh, when, he cool. left, when he left Pure, so uh-huh. we have I a think, lot in common. Yeah, I think he left Pure to go to Eagle Creek. Am I, I? I think you're. I think you're right. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So your family was cowboys. Did, did you have a lot of horse experience and cattle rustling yeah, I grew, and all that? Grew up around horses and cattle, and yeah, grew up in that, that mostly high mountain ranches in Colorado. Oh, beautiful. So. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. yeah, we have a lot of that. I live in Bishop, so we have a fair amount of that here in the mountains. A lot of cattle, a lot of cows. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Yeah. I, don't, I don't. I've been on a horse like once in my life. The uh, the old, you know, follow the lead horse Yellowstone trip. So <laughs> I don't know anything about horses. <laughs> yeah, I haven't. I mean, I haven't been on horses since I was 20. You know, I've been living in the city more more and uh, just done a lot of backpacking camping trips, but no horses. <laughs> yeah. Does your family still have property in Colorado? <laughs> they do. Yeah. They, cool. my, my grandpa lives out of near Paonia, up where oh, Chaco yeah, is based. Yeah. Yeah. yeah beautiful, beautiful, beautiful part of the country. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So. And from that, from just growing up, you just choose chose outdoors as a career path, huh? Yeah. So I really wanted to do what I loved. And yep. I've taught, I'm, I'm involved with a lot of youth programs. I'm on the board of directors of a youth program in Southern Utah. And I teach the youth that uh, really, you should really do something you're passionate about and you'll mm-hmm. be much more successful, much happier. You'll, uh, you'll make a difference. And I really believe that. I mean, if you can get into a profession that does what you love to do, 
uh, that's where it's all at. And that's it for me. I mean, 20 years in the outdoor, you know, almost 30 years in the outdoor industry. So yeah, yeah. No, Sam, I was uh, just reading a book the other day about following your heart and it's so true. I mean, if you, it, because it just doesn't become work, right? It's just so much fun what we do. So we're lucky. That's right. Yeah, it's, it, it, and it makes you, it really, I mean, I, I take a trip every summer, at least one week trip where all I do is use our products. Nice. Whether it's backpacking or canoeing or, I mean, I, I make sure every year, I mean, I take a lot of weekend trips and other trips, but I try to really kind of carve out a year, a week every year where I just use the products. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and getting to the backcountry, there's nothing like it. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. You got it. Well, it, you get in the customer mindset, you really yeah. think about the products, you think about, you know, how you want to communicate the products, what people are dealing with. And you, you think about all the things that you've dealt with the last year and what people have been telling you, and you you, you think about how to apply them. And I've invented products, you know, right. in the woods way better than I've invented them at the office. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I'm and not I, an engineer. I'm just a, I, I've been the head, you know the sales guy, the head of sales. Yeah. Know? Right. Right. And then once you use them too, you can actually you know make improvements and talk think about packaging and and uh, you know product catalogs and all that stuff. It's great. Yeah. Content. Yeah. Yeah. You got to you got to be a user in this industry. That's true. That's true. So you've been with Catadine almost 20 years. What do you love yeah, most long about time. it? Long time. Yeah. You know, what we've done over the years, we've actually, we're not the same company. Uh, we, yeah, I was going to say, happened, yeah. What's happened over the years is we've, uh, we've purchased a lot of companies. We bought at least 10 companies over those years. Mm -hmm. So in the last, uh, I don't know, the last 10 years, uh, I've driven a lot of acquisitions for our company, including Alpine Air Foods, freeze dried foods out mm -hmm. of California. That's a 40 year old company out of Grass Valley, California. Yeah. Uh, Optimus Stoves. That's a that's a Swedish company. Mm -hmm. um, that's you know over a hundred year old, one of the top stove brands in Great the market. Stoves, yep. Yep. We purchased uh, SteriPen, one of our competitors, oh, uh, okay. a few years ago, mm -hmm. and we also purchased a, a desalination competitor of ours that makes solar desalination systems. Uh, their name is Spectra or Spectra Watermakers. Mm -hmm. Is that the only one that's not outdoor focused? Yes. Okay. Got you. Got you. So you've mostly yeah, so tried to stay in the outdoor consumer or backpacking products kind of thing. We have. The reason we, we bought Spectro is because we have desalination systems. We've been selling in the marine market and the life raft market for many, many years. Mm -hmm. These guys had a technology that, that, that basically we made small systems and they made medium and larger systems. Mm. They didn't make smaller systems. So it really blended the two companies uh, very well together. Yeah. Cool. And you guys are doing some pretty amazing humanitarian work too. How did that come about? Was that just a, a choice or just as a function of the product that you had or owned or where'd that come about? Yeah. So we, uh, you know, our products make safe, make unsafe water safe. Mm -hmm. And so it's not just for backpacking and camping and traveling. It's also, we have a responsibility to help people in need. There are many, many people throughout the world that don't have access to safe drinking water like we do. Yeah. And so we have a, a really a, a responsibility because of our technology to help them. That's great. And so we've, we've worked with humanitarian organizations and governments all around the world to, um, to help is, you know, eradicate diseases, uh, help people after, after a natural disaster mm -hmm. or bring safe drinking water to places where people just hadn't, didn't know, how to really treat their water. Like in Asia, you don't have as many people with safe drinking water issues because they have thousands and thousands of years of culture of boiling their water. Right. But in places like Africa and South America, you've got a lot of waterborne illnesses. I bet you do a lot of work in Africa, huh? We do. Yeah. We've yeah. done a number of big projects there. So we're doing, yeah. we're currently doing some big projects with our solar based desalination systems. Yeah. Cause they have so, horrible uh, water there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, the problem with their waters, it's not just that, that the fresh water is contaminated. It's that the water, the groundwater is becoming brackish. Yeah. So yeah. you have saltwater intrusion into mm -hmm. fresh groundwater. And there, therefore, the only way to treat that is desalination. Interesting. So, and are you, are you working on some big plants over there, desalination plants, or is it still not your largest? Yeah, so what, what, we, what we specialize in is solar desalination. So it's sustainable desalination. So it's mm. not... It's not hungry for power. It's not hungry for gas. It's it just uses the power of the sun Perfect. to desalinate water. So we our systems go from like about 350 gallons a day up to 20,000 gallons per day. Mm -hmm. So small villages, you know, s smaller areas, or you could you can combine a few of those units for a little bit larger area. So we're not doing the big huge city systems like you find along the coast in California, right? You know, for millions and millions of people. But but to take a small village in Kenya or other parts of Africa, mm -hmm. that's what we specialize in. Or coastal communities, uh, communities on a on an island. 
Yeah, that's huge. I was in Africa climbing Kilimanjaro a few years back, and um, before we went on the the climb, we got to spend some time outside of Arusha looking at some of the projects to help those folks with their water. Man, it's just it's a huge issue over there. It, it is. Was then. Yes. Yeah. It's getting worse all around the world. I mean, if you think about the world's uh, drinking water or water on a planet Earth, yeah, ninety eight percent of planet Earth's water is salt water. Right. Only 2% is fresh water. Mm-hmm. So while most companies that treat water can, can work on the 2%, Katadyne can treat 100% of the Katadines of, 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 the, of the planet Earth's water. And with the growing population, water is becoming more and more scarce. We, we find that here in the eastern Sierra in California. I mean, it's, it's, you know, you've seen that, read that in the news. It's been drought the last, well, last year we got hammered by snow, but prior to that, and there's just never enough water. And it's all got yeah, to be, you know, more and more. We of actually did treated. a... We did a really cool project with NASA um, where we're actually uh, doing a doing a test to capture all the gray water in your home. So everything oh, is cool. gray water in your home except for toilet water. Toilet water is black water. Right. So all that gray water that's going down your sink, that's going down to your shower, that's going through your disposal, whatever, it's gray. Um, that water can be captured and can be recycled and reused if you can run it through a reverse osmosis system like ours. That's amazing. That's awesome. Have you, so we have... Did you guys go to Flint? Did you do any work with the folks in Flint? We didn't. No, uh, that water that was chemically. Just, that's chemical. Yep. Yeah. So we're, we're yeah. not specializing in chemical, but the saltwater desalination systems could have certainly treated that water. Right. Um, but that's again, that's that's out of our size range, right? That's a huge community. Right. And you were telling me you guys did some work with the World Health Organization in Mexico to eradicate a blindness epidemic caused by bacteria. How'd that come about? <laughs> yeah, there's a blindness that was being caused by a bacteria in water called trachoma. This trachoma bacteria actually irritates the inside of the eyelid. So you drink you drink this water with this bacteria in it. It irritates the inside of the eyelid. And as people blink, they, uh, they scratch off the outside of their pupil. Oh, my God. And so it leads to blindness. So we worked with the World Health Organization, the government of Mexico, to distribute um, hundreds of thousands of our gravity-fed water filters that last tens of thousands of gallons. It's called the Catadine drip filter, the last 39,000 gallons. Wow to all these homes all over Mexico. And we've effectively eradicated through the help of the World Health Organization and the government of Mexico, this trachoma blindness that was uh, rampant throughout these communities. Good for you guys. That's awesome. That was really a neat thing. That's um, something we can, you know, we, we sleep really well at night knowing we can help people like that. Exactly. Yeah. And you're, so some other, what are some of the other technologies that you're using to help the developing world? It's all solar, yeah, so we, we do, um, we use some of our, uh, s- some of our uh, ceramic filters, water filters that last, like in the case of those drip filters, you know, up to 13,000, 39,000 gallons. They're reusable, they're gravity fed. Uh, some of those are put in buckets and we sell those to NGOs for, you know, $20, let's say, mm-hmm. and they can, they, can, uh, they can ship those anywhere in the world, put them in buckets and immediately treat fresh water. Mm-hmm. So we're doing a lot of that type of work uh, as well as donations. Uh, and we're also t- working with communities where they have saltwater intrusion, brackish water, wells have turned brackish, and we're offering our solar desalination technology. So we're working with the likes of Tesla and Google on some really big projects where Tesla, the batteries of Tesla, can be used to store the sun power through solar panels. We don't yeah. deal with solar panels, but you got to store that energy. Sure. And then that energy can be used by our really energy efficient desalination systems. Right. Yeah, and the sun's always there. I mean, that's awesome. And so you guys, yes. is, do you have, is it mostly portable type pro- projects that you're working on? Or is it, do you have anything of a larger scale? So we, we start with a small Pelican size case systems that can yeah. be checked on to aircraft like luggage. Mm-hmm. And those, those are shipped all over the world after a natural disaster. Mm-hmm. And then we, we have trailerized systems that could be like 1,300 uh, or 1,800, 2,500 gallons per day. Mm-hmm. And then we cool. go all the way up to containerized systems that could be shipped in a shipping 20 or 40 foot shipping container shipped somewhere either left on a trailer or mounted as a permanent, uh, permanent, what we call land-based desalination system. Wow. Like we have in Kenya, uh, working with Tesla where they, they installed this thing using their solar panels and it's a fixed uh, area where people come and they know to get their drinking water there every day. That's awesome. So you can go to a, you know, after a hurricane, after an earthquake, ship your stuff there and help the people still have water. Yeah, so we, we work with NGOs, relief agencies who yeah. they're the boots on the ground. They know they know how to get in, they know how to bring supplies. We're working more and more with them to take our systems in and provide a sustainable way to treat water 
But what we don't want to see happen is what happened in Puerto Rico, where all those bo- all that bottled water landed on the runways, right, right. and it's still there, and it's contaminating the environment. Right. Plus, it never even reached the people who had the need. Right. So when we say sustainable, it's not just sustainable from an environmental standpoint. It's sustainable because you can make water endlessly with our systems. Yeah, that's awesome. And you guys were doing some work. You were, I think we were swapping emails. Uh, you are working with the guys at Lucy Lights? Yeah, we've been doing some projects with them. So we, we love uh, what they have to offer. Amazing They're doing what a lot they do, in the humanitarian yeah. sector. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty cool. So you can use their systems, of course, and our uh, any of our systems. You bundle those together. Uh, and, you know, we, we work with NGOs together. We've done a, a sort of some soft bundles on Amazon that are really fun. We've done some cross-pollination from a marketing standpoint. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Great people. Love that organization. Love the people there. John and Songa are doing a great job. Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah, I'm going to talk to them tomorrow. Actually, John was on the podcast episode 77, but I'm going to talk to both of them tomorrow. That'll be a fun conversation. <laughs> nice. Are you doing anything in the event space? You know, all these events going on around the, the country and stuff that always need water. And like we just, you know, we had the uh, no plastic impact at the recent outdoor show to get away from all the plastic water bottles that are there. What about places like South by Southwest and some of the big, you know, Burning Man? You doing anything at those those places? You know, our products are present there, but we're not officially sponsoring any of those uh, any of those. Uh, right, but, you, but your yet. equipment's there, yeah. But our equipment's there, and we're we're seeing more and more people using it. We're getting yeah. more and more, even into concerts where people are going to camp at concerts. Yeah, you're seeing a lot more of our products being used. I think people are trying to get away from hauling in plastic bottles, and they want to treat water on site. And even if there's a a pump or a spigot. People don't trust that water. They'd right. rather filter it or right. purify it like with a SteriPen. Yeah. Uh, so I think you're seeing our products more and more at, at all sorts of camping outdoor events. That's great. And you must work with a bunch of outdoor outfitters and adventure travel outfitters with SteriPen and some of your other products, right? Yeah, we definitely do. Like the yeah. Boundary Waters here in Minnesota, all the outfitters up there have our products, sell our products, mm-hmm. including our food, our Alpine Air food, of course. Oh, cool. Uh and people that you know, a lot of the a lot of the uh, guides that, that take people up in in Nepal uh, through the Himalayas mm, use our yeah, products. Yeah. Conrad Anchor is a good friend of ours. He's used our products for many years. So that's awesome. And who are some of the mentors that have helped you along the way? You know, I've had a lot of them. Uh, Chris Speaks certainly growing up. You know, going to BYU together and mm-hmm. watching him through the outdoor industry. He's he's one of my great mentors. Uh, I've had a, a number of others. Alan Lazé, who is the former president of Cadillac North mm-hmm. America. Mm-hmm. He really helped me uh, understand the ins and outs of the industry, understand marketing and communication, and really taught me a lot about leadership. He spent a lot of his life in the ski industry, okay. and uh, he had a lot of great background from the ski industry that we applied in the outdoor industry that fit in really, really well. Yeah, right. Yeah, you guys are doing some great things. Like I said, you're growing like crazy, and you're making great products. You see them everywhere, so that's pretty cool. I have one of your uh, Optimus stoves, I think. Yeah. Use it all the yeah. time. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah, you're seeing Optimus, you know, in a lot of places. Now that we we not only have Optimus uh, stoves that uh, you can burn off of uh, fuel, you know, liquid fuel, we have the gas canister stoves. Yeah, that's one. And I we have a four yeah. we have a four season gas canister stove. You can flip the canister upside down, and use it in all four seasons. Oh, so, that's pretty slick. Yeah, yeah, that's good to use in the winter. Um, what outdoor activities do you participate in still? You said you get out a lot. We backpack. Yeah, we're passionate. My my family, we're all passionate about skiing, backpacking, mm. fishing, you know, canoe camping, back uh, uh, climbing, paddling. I mean, we do it all. We love yeah. it. You get up to the Boundary Waters a lot. We do. Yeah, we always we always take a trip up there every year. We love the Boundary Waters. Yeah, I got to get back up there. That's a beautiful spot. I've only been there one time. It's amazing. Yeah, people people that don't haven't been there don't understand how remote and beautiful right. that place is. Yeah, yeah. And you get there on the shoulder seasons, and there's you know not that many people around, and you get the fabulous yeah. sunsets and there's fishing and paddling and everything. Yeah, Mark Mark Day, who required who retired from Las Portiva recently, he's actually coming through to pick up some gear for me tomorrow and oh, head cool. up to the Boundary Waters. No, I still said hi. I will. That's great. Um, so, do you have any suggestions or advice for folks wanting to get into the outdoor biz, or maybe if they're already in the biz, grow their career? Yeah, you know, I I love to help people that are looking to get in the outdoor business to give them suggestions where to go, what to do. I mean, a lot of young people like me want to want to break in the outdoor business and don't really know where to start. Yeah. I mean, one of the best places to start is honestly is outdoor retail, working in retail stores, knowing the customers, knowing what retailers are dealing with. To me, that's such a foundational part of understanding the outdoor industry, because in the end, we're built on the backs of the outdoor retailers. Yeah. So working for outdoor retailers and then maybe becoming an independent sales rep, you know, supporting those retailers for a while before 
somebody moves into a, a manufacturing side of the business, that'd be, that's a great career path. I mean, that's a little bit like my career path. And uh, I, I like to hire people. I've always liked to hire people that have uh, outdoor retail background. It's huge. Yeah. Same here. I work at A16. And you really get a unique perspective of the product because, you know, you get, have to sell it to the consumer. And then you actually see when the reps come by, you learn about the back end of it, how it gets produced. And then you see your, you know, you, you get the experience of selling it to the consumer. It really just solidifies that foundation of understanding how the whole chain works. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, there's no other other training like it. Yeah. Um, do you have any daily routines used to keep your sanity? Walk, <laughs> exercise, meditate. Yeah, to me, it's yeah. I've got to exercise. I got to get out and get the blood flowing. You know, <laughs> I mean, I try to I try to run a lot, bike a lot in the summer. In the winter, I cross country ski a lot. Um, but yeah, you're right. And meditation is a big deal. You've got to really back up, back out of things a little bit and uh, and think about things from a different perspective. Yeah, chill um, out. you know. Yeah, it's, it's really a vital part of what we do, right? Right, right. <laughs> do you use any apps? Or how do you meditate? No, I mean, I, I you know, I'm sort of a spiritual guy, so mm-hmm. I, I use, uh, I certainly use some use some scriptures, use some, you know, good, good books that I read, yep. good music, yep. uh, try to just get in the right zone, uh, really spending time in the outdoors and being outside and breathing fresh air and getting the blood flowing. That's really what gets me thinking. Yeah, cool, good. How about books? Do you have any favorite books or books you give us gifts or favorite podcasts, maybe? Yeah, I, well, yours, of course. Oh, well, <laughs> thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> but yeah, favorite, favorite books. I mean, I'm a big, I love history. So I love oh. Shackleton's Endurance. Oh, man, when great the, book. When, when Shackleton's group was stuck down in the polar ice caps and those guys, not one of them died, right? Every Unbelievable single one of them story, yeah. It's a great, great story. It's a, high, it's, it's a must read for anybody. I totally agree. Because you can apply a lot of those principles in work, in your family, in your personal life. I mean, those guys, they knew how to suffer and struggle, but they knew how to do it in a dignified way. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting. A lot of people talk about how the, the story of leadership, but I think it's also a story of followership, right? I mean, not only totally. was he an amazing leader, but those guys followed him and f- hung on every his every word, whatever. You know, they lay, I went by there when I was in that article by Elephant Island where he left them and said, I'll be back. And I'm sitting there looking and going, yeah. are you kidding me? <laughs> You know, and they just hung out, said, "Okay, he'll be back," and they waited. And that Conrad, out. Conrad Anchor actually retraced all those steps, yeah, and he said it's right. almost impossible that these guys could have done that. It's and incredible. He, this guy's a renowned mountain climber, you right? Know? Right. Yeah. It's a great book. It's a great I, book. I highly yeah. recommend it. Yeah. yeah. Any others? Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, a, I, I like all the adventure books, you know, about the historical adventures. Um, I also like a lot of World War II books, you oh, know, like huh. The Hiding Place. Oh. Uh, the Hiding Place is a good one where, where you know, neat, really great family hit out. Um, Jews during World War II and risked their own lives. I mean, just a great story of oh, bravery, cool. courage, doing the right thing, not worrying about the consequences. Just do what is right. You know, yeah. they just did the right thing. They knew that, that that the helping people in need was the right thing to do, and they didn't care. They knew that they might go to a concentration camp and be killed, but they were willing to do it. Yeah, that's awesome. We'll link to that in the show notes. Yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, good. How about other podcasts? You have other podcasts in your queue? You know, I, I listen a lot to uh, to to um, Kristen with. Uh, uh, oh, Verde. Verde. She's, yep. yep. She's got a great podcast yep. that she's running that's uh, talking a lot about retail and the face of retail and the changes in the outdoor industry. It's called Channel Mastery. Yeah, really she's, good one. She's, it's a good one, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, what about your favorite outdoor gear purchase under $100? Here's your turn for the shameless plug. <laughs> well, beside everything that I that I that I sell myself, right. <laughs> I, I I mean I'm a sucker for La Sportiva um, running shoes. I, I oh. mean I'm always buying La Sportiva running shoes because they fit my feet really well. Uh-huh. In fact, I'm wearing a pair now. I wear them all the time. I wear them at the office. I wear them oh, know, cool. hiking. I wear them running. I just I'm a sucker for La Sportiva for some reason. Awesome. Well, I'll have to check those out. I have a, I'm a Nike guy, but I'll uh, I'll look up La Sportiva. Yeah, they they just fit my feet really well. They wear really well. They've got great traction. You know, they they've got they've got the perfect insole. That's got the right uh, you know, yeah. it's got the right stability. Well, we know they make great climbing shoes, so and boots and stuff. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I've got all I've got their climbing shoes. Maybe that's how I you know got into the running shoes. Is I always had the climbing shoes, the mountaineering boots, and mm-hmm. just I, the way they fit my feet is like a glove. So. That's the thing. Yeah, once you find something that fits and works, that's like your product. Your that Optimus stove. I mean, it just works. You know, I don't go backpacking that often, and every time I Pull it out, turn it on. It works. So that's perfect. Yeah, we have an old Optimus Fea stove. It's a brass stove. We put yeah. that out at a trade show, and people come by 
you know, one after another. Say, I I used to go with my grandfather, or my <laughs> father that had those that stove, and they loved it. You know, yeah, all of us old guys. <laughs> that's how we started with those things. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, clunky, big, heavy, heavy gear, but people still buy them. That's right. That's right. They still work. Yep. Uh, as we wrap up, is there anything else you'd like to say to our listeners or ask of our listeners? Yeah, you know, I think I think the main thing that I've learned through my experience in the outdoor industry is I think we have an inherent responsibility because we have something that many people don't have. Mm-hmm. We've got happiness from from being in the outdoors. We've got experiences being in the outdoors. We know how it changes us and makes us a better person. Mm-hmm. And we have an inherent uh, you know need to, to to share that with people, especially you, especially young people. Yeah. I mean, young people in today's world need to get off their phones. They need to get active. They need to get outside, yeah. and they need to learn how to, you know, learn how to interact with nature and learn how to meditate in nature and stop get, and get off their devices and just start figuring out who they really are, what yeah. life's all about. And it's it's so amazing when you see kids do that. I mean, I've I've gone on so many trips where kids just had this epiphany, <laughs> you know, like the first couple of days they're just so frustrated because they don't have their phones. And by day three or four, they're picking up sticks and they're 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 playing pine cone golf, you know, right. or they're or they're jumping off boulders into the lake, or I mean, they're just or they're sliding down glaciers. I mean, it's just you, I, I see that, and I just I think there's no greater pleasure than to watch these kids change like that and get out of their the paradigm that they were stuck in before. Yeah, get out of the city. That's good advice. It's amazing where you can find just and being by yourself, right? I mean, that's that's a big part of it too. Yeah. I so think. anyway, I'd, I would ask I would ask your listeners to find some. Find a young person and get them in the outdoors with you. Take them on the next trip you go on. Love it. Take them outside. That's perfect. If people want to follow up with you, how, what's the best way? LinkedIn, email? Yeah, what's... LinkedIn. LinkedIn's, LinkedIn's great. Cool. Uh, you can email me at, at Sean, S-H-A-W-N dot H at Catadine dot com. It's the easy cool. way to get a hold of me. Awesome. All right. We'll link to that all in the show notes and uh, follow up after that with any questions. Good talk, check, Good. Sorry. Good catching up with you again. Yeah, thanks, Rick. Really enjoyed it. It's yeah. been a pleasure to talk to you, and I uh, hope, uh, hope to catch some more of your podcasts. In the near well, future. I appreciate that, too, and we'll see you at an OR. Are you going to be at the OR show, uh, I guess, next summer? Will you be go to that one? Or? Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be walking all the shows. I'm not sure what Catadine's uh, commitment is yet, but mm-hmm. uh, we're you know we're, we're definitely uh, committed to the outdoor business. It's just a question of which which shows make the most which sense. Which and how. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, it's it's yeah. a little bit of a moving landscape. Yeah, cool. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, appreciate it, Rick. Thanks again. All right, have a good one. You too. If you want more of the Outdoor Biz Podcast, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Be sure to go to the outdoorbizpodcast.com where you find all the episodes, show notes, and much, much more. Until next time, be sure to make time to get outside.